Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to another episode of this series. So in this video, I'm trying to explain why I choose this architecture and uh, what are the pros and cons and why I should defend this architecture. So basically what you can see here is in the right side, I created a separate system. Why is that? That is because that not all of the business is similar and not, of the, not all of the requirements are similar to every business. So if we just clone or replicate the whole system in the left to run in the, in the right, then maybe the client side system will be much more overweight, overweighted. So if we create a stripped down version, only two or three UIs, and login screen, and uh, then actually we wrap it into the independent project, independent service, and deploy it into the local machine. Then it will be not only faster, but also it will be more maintainable. Okay, number one. Number two is that depending on the need, in the right side, uh, the database schema may or may not similar as the left side database schema. For example, in the right side, you can see that I added uh, is synced property or synced property, right? But in the left side, we don't need that because it's the mother table, mother database. We don't, it doesn't need the property of synced. So already we are deferring the mother database with the child database. So there's another case. We should make it the, the right side green thing separate than the main server, main project. Another thing is if you can see that the whole communication, I am not actually accessing the database directly. So from the right side into the green zone, I'm not accessing the database directly. So I'm not exposing the mother, mother database string into the client side. And of course, uh, I'm not ex actually exposing the mother uh, other infrastructure related code into the client side. So this is another gain. And even if the client side and the right side, the user can actually see the data, he can actually see that because if he wants to tamper the local database, then he actually, the data actually goes through the queue client to the main database, it actually one way. So, and we can actually check which data is coming from where. So in my system, I have the branch ID, uh, then who created that and when modified that. So, so this is all be tracked. But if we use built-in replication system, or if we don't have this kind of logging or tagging system, then uh, it actually become more problematic to track where is the data is coming from and who is actually changing or updating those data. So another thing is, if you can see that this is, since the right side is fully independent, we can actually host this system into a Raspberry Pi or any maybe laptop or any desktop machine. And that desktop machine or laptop can be uh, work as a host, a server. So suppose you have or we have a branch where uh, a lot of salesperson is having their own independent sales machine. So a lot of queue. So what happens is if independent salesman is having independent sales machine, so it will be it will become troublesome for the software developer or the sol or the support engineer to set up the same thing to each of the machine. But if there is a local server and he set up, sets up the whole green software into the local server, then each of the salesman's PC or tablet can directly call to the local server. And the local server will be having this timer service and the queue client, and the local server will push and pull the latest data from the actual web server, the cloud server. And it is very unlikely that the LAN 
inst the LAN network will be disconnected. Uh, and even if it disconnected, there are a lot of other ways like wireless system and maybe he can directly plug and play, changing the cable quickly to connect the main host, the local host with the local uh, out terminals. So it can be scalable. It can be well maintainable and it can be replaceable easily. And if you think in the right side, the green side, that uh, we don't have to be identical with the left side, the left cloud components, because we can use a stripped down version. That, that stripped down version may be even made with the, the, the non-related code into the right side. For example, uh, for example, the blue, blue uh, you can, if you, I hope you can see my mouse. The blue uh, components are actually .NET and maybe React. And the right side, the green, even if not .NET, maybe it's with the PHP. And even if it is not PHP, it's maybe a desktop system. It doesn't matter. So it's totally decoupled. So it, it is scalable and vice versa. Another thing is the database is not has to be real, same with the left hand database because we are actually pushing and pulling data through our code we can actually convert the data as per we need as per we fit so and the queue client uh, so in the queue client we can use rabbitmq so rabbitmq and in the in the left hand side server we don't have to use the azure queue we can use any amqp supported server so it can be azure SNS, I don't know if as your uh, sorry, Amazon SNS have the AMQP support or not. But my point is that we can easily mix and match the whole architecture apps as far we fit. And uh, if we see in the left side that since the database updating is ha happened from the trigger, so if something changes into the, our business logic code, uh, so sorry, not business, schema. So we can just change the trigger here and all of the data will be converted automatically. And if we directly call the uh, Azure server or actually the cloud server from our client side code, then if we change something into the left side, the server side, then we have to ensure that each of the client, maybe there are 30 clients, 30 uh, green machines. I mean, yeah, you know. so. So each of the client having the updated business logic code. So it's, it's not a scalable thing. So this is, how, this is what I want to say that uh, designing a whole offline system is quite complex. But if we can strip down what we actually need and create a separate system, we can start from small version. And we can add uh, the more features in the local version as per we need. So in this way, uh, we can actually decouple the whole thing. Another thing, uh, for example, uh, the trigger, uh, since it's Azure function or maybe any serverless function, so it, it actually not running every time. Unlike the code, uh, for example, uh, in the night time, maybe 12 hours approx, the left hand side code, the trigger is not running because our business operation at most will run 12 hours from morning to night. And in the rush hour, maybe 16 hours. So one third of the time, the, if the trigger will not be running. So if we keep adding the, uh, this type of synchronizing code as an app into the app service API, then it will be more cost problematic. It will, it will occur, incur more cost. But if we use the serverless mechanism, so only it will trigger from the queue client, and it will run only a few times. And if it doesn't run, the bill will not incur. So in the long run, it is actually cost, cost effective. So this is uh, my, my idea. And as I said already, that if I want to remake the whole thing again, I will keep the left green, sorry, left blue side as it is. But I will try to make the green side if in the right side, if you can see, uh, as Docker container, Docker Compose, so that uh, 
so that uh, I don't have to install the, uh, the .NET framework or the PHP or other supporting frameworks into the client machine manually again and again. So if any new branch adds up to the customer, suppose, uh, 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 suppose the shop's name is XYZ, and he wants to add three new branches in this year within a month. So I just request the customer to purchase a machine, whatever the laptop or desktop, as far he, as far he thinks. So I'll just install the Docker, or I can actually run this using uh, a remote desktop machine. So I'll just install the Docker, and I'll just pull the image, run the Docker Compose image, and it will just run automatically the whole thing. So, so yeah, uh, I hope this actually uh, brings a lot of value if you think, and and yes, it is not the end of the story. So it's just a beginning. I found it's helpful. So if you can think about it more and more and refine the idea more, and uh, if you be kind enough to share with me the ideas, we can have the discussion again and again. And this playlist will go on according to the discussion. So yep, that's all I wanted to say for the whole thing. Thanks for watching. Assalamu alaikum.